Ah, hello, good evening, and welcome to another um, ranking, and tonight it's another singles ranking, um, to complement the uh, singles ranking I did on the Fall and the Smiths uh, we, a few weeks back. Um, this is a, a singles ranking uh, f of the Pixies, and I'm doing um, the initial run of their UK releases, um, one because I think singles uh, releases later are a bit different, it's not not quite the same thing, and also um, the well the early run is the only ones I actually I actually got so I actually got involved with, um, because singles in general are a whole different ball game nowadays. I mean, um, there, there's so many different tracks released off albums now, and you can actually purchase individual tracks if you want, or just stream individual tracks or whatever. And um, singles in general are it's just just so different now I mean it's not not like the good old days of when you used to nip out and buy your latest 7 inch or your 12 inch from the, uh, the record store and then it was uh, quite often in the charts for, for several weeks um, but anyway um, yeah the P Pixies did, did release um, a, a really good run of singles in the late 80s early 90s um, not quite as prolific as the Smiths or the Fall but uh, still really good um, Pix is of course one of my favourite bands, as I've uh, said quite often so far on this channel. Um, if you want to know more about my feelings on the Pixies, then check out my Pixies album ranking, which I did a few weeks back. Um, the initial run of singles, uh, there was um, there was actually seven altogether during their lifetime. Uh, these are UK releases, like lots of bands were a few different releases uh, uh, around the world in the States, I think. Um, obviously in mainland Europe, I think there are a couple of differences. Um, uh, but uh, I'm, I'm just basically just ranking the UK releases from, from the 88 to 91, which was their first first run of releases uh, in the UK. Although one of them I've since think I'm, I'm since begin to think it wasn't really officially released in the UK, even though it was widely available. I'll mention that when I get to it. But I've also decided to include a uh, another single that was released a bit a little bit later after they split up for. Um, for a, um, a certain reason, which you'll soon find out about. Anyway, um, yeah, Pixies, um, Pixies singles coming your way. Um, let's start. Eight items to talk about here. They're ranked in my order of preference. Um, like the Smiths and the Fall, I'm sort of thinking about you know um, whether they work as a single or not. Well, I think the Pixies they generally did. They were one of those bands that used to write really, really cool, mostly short songs. So they're ideal for singles, really. And okay, let's, let's just crack on with this and see how we go. Okay, number eight in this ranking, I've got um, Debaser, um, which came. Which was, this was released later in 1997. Like I say, it was a, the later one that was released after they split up for quite a few years, and it was actually released uh, to help promote their um, compilation album, the best of album called um, Death to the Pixies. And um, I, although I didn't know it at the time, this uh, was released in three different versions. And I got this. I just bought one thing. Oh, I just got the new, the new single, and uh, it was um, a studio version, a demo version, and a live version. And I ended up with the live version, which is it's okay. It's pretty good. Uh, obviously, I've already got the original version on Doolittle, which it, which it came from um, when it was um, uh, recorded and released in '89. But yeah, this is this was pretty good. I mean, um, Debaser is just one of their classic songs. Um, uh, so it had to be featured here anyway, I think, whatever. But um, this is just a really, really cool live version of it. It comes with um, three other live songs, Holiday Song, Cactus and Nimrod's Son. I think they're all recorded in Chicago. What was it? I don't know what the venue was. Uh, where are uh, yeah, Little City Studios, is it, in Chicago? I think, anyway. So tiny, I need my glasses on for that. But, um, anyway, there you go. But uh, yeah, as with um, all the uh, Pixies releases and uh, the Vaughan Oliver artwork on the front and back. Uh, a little bit in the middle there, but um, yeah, this is the only um, CD single I bought by the Pixies. Um, um, and no, well, I have no idea whether it's available on vinyl or not. So um, anyway, there we are, c coming in at um, number eight on my Pixies singles ranking, Debaser, released in 1997. Okay, now uh, but into the, the the main the main run of stuff when they were when they were still around. Number seven, it's, it was released in nineteen ninety off the Boston Over album, and it's uh, "Dig for Fire," um, which um, apart from the rather strange sleeve, when I first bought this, actually, I thought it was a mistake. I thought it was either a misprint or something on the sleeve there, but um, no, that's apparently how it's supposed to be. It's like a crashed spaceship or something with the pictures written. It's, it's basically this is the globe off the front. 
cover of um, Bossa Nova, the album, so just, just making use of the, the same model, another Vaughan, Vaughan Oliver sign. But yeah, this is, I mean, it, is, it is a great, great track. Um, the reason it's down here, I, think it's, I don't really think it works very well as a single, but um, there you go, it's just a really, really cool song. Um, uh, you've got three other tracks on here. Again, you know, I mean, like the Smiths and the Folly, there's always really cool B sides and extra tracks on these. You've got Dig for Fire, then you've got a track called the Velvety Instrumental Version, which is kind of like a Velvet Underground influence, a um, little, little ditty. Uh, Santo and um, a track called Winter Long, which is a Neil Young song, which uh, was taken from uh, there was a tribute Neil Young tribute album called The Bridge, I think it was called, where lots of different artists just covered Neil Young songs. And uh, the Pixies obviously influenced by Neil Young, if you're familiar with uh, both bands. Um, but um, yeah, this is just um, just just a really really nice nice track, nice single. Um, I talk about this quite a bit on the. Uh, on my other Pixies video, so um, yeah, there we go. It was actually a different mix from the album version. It was a different mix with a few overdubs, uh, so it's just, it does sound slightly different, which is always nice to hear something a bit different rather than just a straight take off the album. And uh, so there we go. That's uh, number eight, "Dig for Fire," in my Pixies singles ranking. Okay, the next one, number six, uh, also from Bossa Nova. Uh, they only released two singles of Bossa Nova. And it's Valoria. I think Valoria was the first release, was it? I feel I can't actually. I've not. I can't remember the, the running order, but uh, yeah, it's got, it's got a nice sleeve that with um, some sort of little, little strange Victorian doll on there. Is it a Victorian doll? I think it's about, made to look a bit like. I don't know. Actually, I'm not quite sure. It's a strange doll on the front anyway, made up of various bits and pieces. Um, yeah, this was a great song actually. Um, uh, it was um, featuring the, the the theremin is always featured quite a lot in um, Pixies song. This is featured quite heavily on this, and um, the lyrics for this were inspired by um, the Rosicrucians, the um, which were the seven, uh, 17th century spiritual movement. That was a, I think it was kind of connected with the temp, Knights Temple. I have read a bit about them in the, over the years, but I can't quite remember uh, off the top of my head. But um, that that's where the inspiration for the song came from. Um, so I think that's nice. We've got all this all this typography was in style, the same style as the Bossa Nova album. But um, yeah, it's just a you know really really nice really really nice single. It work, works better as a single as Dig for Fire. Um, it's got a real good ground ground, really good sort of heavy intro of, um, on the guitar from um, Joey Santiago, which is um, pretty cool. Uh, it did, this came out coming out in 1990 because because the pictures were really big in the UK compared to most most countries and of course in 1990 was the was the, uh, the time in Manchester you know the Happy Mondays and Stone Roses and all that kind of thing and the pictures were kind of like roped into all that because of an indie band and there was a um, a uh, compilation album out called Happy Days which is a compilation of uh, the, the Manchester scene really and this ended up on it <laughs> strangely enough. In the, not even a British band, let alone a Manchester band, but uh, they ended up on there, and uh, that's that. But yeah, it's a great, great song, good, good live number. Yeah, so it's just, um, just a great Pixies tune, and it's uh, number six in my little rundown here. Okay, um, this is uh, off the Doolittle album, the next one in number five. It's uh, Here Comes Your Man. A lovely picture of a dog on the front there. Pitbull Terrier, I think they call those, aren't they? Anyway, it's got a rather cool, uh, cool collar on there. Oh, really, really nice. But uh, yeah, this is again classic Pixies. I mean, all these, all these singles are just classic Pixies. Um, but what was on the B side of this? I can't remember now. It's a Wave of Mutilation, the UK surf mix of a uh, Wave of uh, Mutilation, Bailey's Walk was another track, and uh, Into the Whites. Into the Whites, a great song actually. That's really good. Uh, these I've seen them do that live a couple of times. But yeah, the, the the thing about this was interesting was um, wasn't one of Black Francis' favourite songs really that he'd written. He, he actually thought it was a bit too poppy for the Pixies because it is it is very um, commercial and very sort of like quite lightweight for the Pixies in many ways. Really nice m melodic tune, but um, I don't know. It's um, I think he was he was talked around and got released as a single. It's become one of their best known songs. So. Um, uh, I think he's probably uh, seen better of it now. It's um, the inspiration for it is there's something to do with um, drunks on a uh, on a train. I think it was, and uh, they they got uh, they all died in the California earthquake. Um, Black Francis grew up in California, and he, he says you're quite it's quite a you know bit of a quake zone around there. And uh, he actually remembers a few tremors as a, as a kid, and there was always something really uh, intriguing about the the 
just before an earthquake or an earth tremor where all the all the wildlife go quiet and everything and they see birds birds leaving the area but uh but yeah so like i say great i shot the dog on the back there looking very cool but uh yeah it's um no, this is a great great pixie song great single just um i think i think it made the uk chart so um, there you go that's uh number five in my um pixie single ranking now number four now, this is the one that i'm not quite sure it was actually an official release in the uk but it was widely available i just i just saw it came out and i bought it and i uh, just assumed it was in there but just recently i've been reading particularly on discogs i think it was i was looking oh is it was it actually released in the uk because in the UK, lots of things were actually made in, in Europe, in Germany or somewhere, and then you just, or France, and you, you, okay, it's just been printed, or the sleeve is printed somewhere or whatever. So, anyway, the single was Alec Eiffel. It came out in 1991, the second single release of um, Trump Le Monde. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. It, was, it says Benelux down here. It was made in, um, uh, printed in, or printed in Belgium, I think. Um, but uh, yeah, like I said, I don't know. But it's it is a great, great song. Actually, it's all about um, uh, Alexander Gustav Eiffel, who um, is famous for designing and building the Eiffel Tower, and also uh, lots of other famous buildings around the world, including he was involved with the uh, building of the Statue of Liberty in the States and um, in New York. Yeah, I think he he did the uh, metal framework for the um, for the statue there, which is quite interesting. And uh, it's a great song. It's all about Alec Eiffel. It's all about a particular thing I mentioned in my pictures, uh, my pictures album ranking. It's about a certain photograph showing Alex um, under the um, archway on the bottom of the Eiffel Tower. So um, it's really, really cool. Really, really cool tracks. Nice, short, sharp, punchy single. Uh, motorway to Roswell, Planet of Sound, live version of Planet of Sound and live version of Tame on the B-side. So yeah, Motorway to Roswell is one of their best songs actually, that's on here as well. But yeah, just really, really good. Really, really good good um, thing, but a bit of a boring sleeve, I don't know actually. Did Vaughan Oliver do this? I'm not quite sure, it's just n not really his style really, is it? But uh, Just got the Pixies, uh, the P logo on there, on the back a little... Um, Little drawing of the Eiffel Tower with rockets taking off. <laughs> Very cool. But yeah, that's a um, great single. Um, number four. Whether it was released in the UK or not, I don't care. It's number four in my uh, ranking here. Okay, number three, one of their best known songs. Number three, off um, Doolittle. Monkey Gone to Heaven, 89. There's, there's the monkey. On the front. I'm not quite sure how this was set up, whether it's a real monkey or a, whatever there. It's a, definitely a Von one. He actually features on, uh, on the album sleeve as well. But, do little, but yeah, this is just one of their classic songs all about um, global warming and um, lots of biblical references. If uh, Man is five, then the devil is six, and God is seven. Oh, there we are. Five, six, seven. <laughs> But yeah, it's just very, very typical Pixies. Pixies song is really, really cool, and great, and yeah, just uh, features a string section. This track as well, which is quite nice. So a couple of cellos, a couple of violins, and um, yeah, just, just really, really great. One of their best known songs. Always played live. Well, usually played live anyway. Uh, and it's uh, number three in my Pixies um, uh, singles rundown. I'll show you the back, uh, the back image there. Which is uh, quite strange. I think this kind of stuff uh, inspired me. I, I do quite a lot of detailed photographs of various bits and pieces, you know, rusty gates and uh, rotting bits of wood and here and there. So, uh, Von Oliver is a bit of an inspiration for me there, I think. Okay, top two now. This is uh, one of my favourite songs by the Pixies. Certainly my favourite bass line, which I think I have mentioned in the past. Uh, so number two in my rundown. It's uh, Planet of Sound, which was the first single release off Trump Le Mans, 1991. Uh, just fantastic, absolutely fantastic, and again a really great, short, punchy single. I mean, they, this single should they also gone to number one, really, in my view. But um, the pictures were pretty popular in the UK, but not quite, not quite that big, not not, not quite a um, single buyer's market. But this is just great, it's just absolutely superb. Another uh, strange sleeve there, the old eyeball in the in the bowl there. I don't know. It's like dusted with sugar or something, as well. or salt or whatever. Um, some really nice graphics on these as well. The, the backs similar again, another eyeball shot there. But yeah, you've got a um, theme from Narc, uh, Build High, and uh, Evil Hearted You are the other tracks on here, which are all non non album tracks. Um, 
they're all studio tracks as well though. But uh, I mean, Planet Sound is just brilliant. Like I say, the, the the great bass line that just drives it along there. This typical, typical Kim deal and just being a bit of a bass genius. And um, yeah, it's just just a great, 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 great track. Really, um, really fast, fast shot to the point and over before you know it. But absolutely brilliant. And it's number two in my um, run. It's also a, it's sort of like um, Dig. Was it Dig for Five? Was it, was it Dig for Five? Was it a different mix? Uh, one of the other things. Again, it's a different mix than the than the album, so it's a slightly different. Sounds slightly different, but still, still great. And it's uh, number two, Planet of Sound. Okay, which means uh, number one is their debut single, which is uh, one of their a fan favourites, Gigantic, off the first, off the well off the. Um, Sifa so Rosa album, well, they're rather disturbing, uh, yeah, not bizarre um, cover there, must admit. But yeah, this was um, a glove on the back. My gosh, what's going on? But uh, yeah, this was just fantastic. Um, it's got um, Vamos and the, the Lady, oh, Heaven, in brackets, Lady and the Radiator song, recorded live at the Town and Country Club in London in 88. Uh, now, that song is from the film Eraser Head, the David Lynch film. And um, they, they play that live quite often. Obviously, David Lynch was also a great um, influence on the band. Um, that the, that was recorded on a tour um, that I saw them on, I think. I'm not quite sure. You know, it's, yeah, yeah, it would have been the same tour I saw them. So I think they did play it when I saw them as well in Manchester. I'll have to uh, go back and check. But uh, yeah, this is just great. Um, features uh, Kim Deal on lead vocals. She also co-wrote it, and um, was inspired by the film Crimes of the Heart, which was an '86 film. I think I can't remember. I don't think I've actually seen the film. Who's in it? Um, is it Diane Keaton? I think's in it. But um, I may have to may have to check it out sometime. <laughs> Never actually got around to watching it. But yeah, this is and the, this live favorite. I always play live. Sometimes they play it more than once live, and it's usually. Where it's, it used to be safe for the encore or around that around the end of the set. Um, they, they still do it. I think now, of course, um, Pazla and Chantin, um, if I pronounce her name right, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> she takes over on the vocals now because Kim's not in the lineup anymore. But uh, yeah, still, still, still a live favourite, fan favourite, and uh, number one in my uh, Pixie singles ranking, Gigantic from 1988. And there we go. That's my Pixies uh, singles ranking from the uh, from the classic era. Um, a little item here to show you as well. This was the actual um, Death to the Pixies compilation that um, was released in '97. That that um, the later version of um, Debaser was released to pr help promote. I've got the um, limited edition here, which is in, it's in a rather chunky, chunky box. Comes out. You might recognise that from the actual CD cover as well. It's kind of sleek, but uh, this uh, special edition comes with um, an extra disc. Which is at the back here, which is a, uh, a concert, uh, just a live album basically, uh, recorded in um, oh, I'm gonna sneeze in um, uh, the Netherlands. So um, that's a great item. And all the singles you've seen here, and some of the B sides, with the exception of Alec Eiffel. And there you go. Maybe it wasn't released in the UK. Uh, are, on, are on this uh, collection, um, and the, lots of them are also on the live on the live album as well. They're on this. That's the back, but yeah. So that's uh, if you can still get. And there, there is a the uh, normal version is still still around. It's um, called Death to the Pixies. It was their, I think it was their first compilation. I think uh, there is a later one um, called Wave of Mutilation, and um, I think there's probably a few others around. There's a there's another another great one called uh, from the BBC sessions, which is pretty good. Which has all their all their um, John Peel sessions and and a few other bits and pieces. But um, anyway. There you go. That's my uh, Pixies singles ranking. So I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, there's more coming. So um, stay tuned. Thank you for being there. And I'll say bye for now.